All right, welcome guys. This is Breakfast with the Brand, the number one podcast in the world for entrepreneurs and leaders who want to go from bland to industry leading brand. If you're tuned in live, go ahead. You already know, put your flames in the chat. Also, let us know where you're listening in from. As usual, we have a phenomenal show for you here today, and I am joined by the king of branding himself, Mr. Sean Raiz. So guys, go ahead, put those flames. Today, we're going to be talking about the art and the science of speaking ah (laughs) yes 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 you know that's my topic you know that's i figured i figured you like that i figured you like that definitely how many how many speakers in the building you know shout out to um instagram linkedin youtube facebook how many speakers just hashtag speaker if you're a speaker put it in the comments if you're a speaker Uh, i think you're gonna enjoy this one very good, definitely. So we got LA and Kimberly Fallis on IG. We have Endurance and Shayna Blake on LinkedIn Voice. Guys, think about LinkedIn Voice, right? You have to be a speaker to be on it. True. <laughs> you have to be a speaker to be on LinkedIn Voice. If you don't have a voice, you can't speak. I always say, if you can't speak, you can't eat. Listen, for my professionals out there who are trying to get a, a zero behind their salary, up level their salary, get a raise, get a promotion, it's all about your ability to orate, your ability to inform, your ability to relate to people. And you can't relate to people if you can't speak. So 100%. If can't, yeah, if you can't speak, you can't eat. If you can't raise your level of conversation, Kimberly Fallis, hashtag speaker, let's go. Ariel Diallo just opened up. Listen, you have to be able to speak. You have to be able to orchestrate an understanding with the tools and the instruments that we were given. And the tool and the instrument that we were given from the very beginning is our vocal cords. Let's go. Yes, sir. I want to send a a quick shout out to our people on YouTube. I see. uh, All right. So that's shade. So just a a little bit of shade. Okay. (laughs) So phenomenal. Phenomenal day to shade. Uh, Porsche, phenomenal day. Yvette, phenomenal day as well. Guys, if you're live, go ahead. Just put it in the chat. Where are you calling in from? In fact, where are you listening in from, right? Because this is a live podcast. Sean, we want to dive right in. I know you're going to have a lot to say on this subject because this is like your thing. This is Sean's baby, you guys. So, Sean, let's talk about speaking, man. Is everybody born to be a speaker? Let's start with that. Is everybody Should everybody be a speaker? Is everybody born to be a speaker? You know you have people that are more of the uh, introverted type, right? more introverted type, they might say, well, I'm not, I'm not loud. I'm not um, as animated as Sean. That's not my style. I'm more quiet. I'm more of the person that's in the corner, just sort of doing my own thing. You know, should those people be, you know, pursue speaking and speaking for everybody? I love it. I love the question. So let me help everybody out with a couple of different things, right? First thing you should pick up a book called Smart Gravity. I'm going to have to start getting paid for dropping these uh, dropping these hints and these cues, man. You know, I'm like a brand ambassador for things. When I when I like something, I shout it out. I let you know, I send people to the resource. Right. So there's a book called Smart Brevity, which is an absolutely phenomenal book, which pushes the fact that less is more. Less is more. So when it comes to speaking, timing is everything. Timing is absolutely everything. Sometimes the quietest person in the room says the most. Sometimes the quietest person in the room says the most and is heard the most. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's what you don't say. And timing is everything. So more importantly than what you say is when you say what you say. Because everything thought isn't meant to be spoken. And with, you know, uh, the wisest, wisest um, orator I've ever heard said that you want to think 10 times before you speak. You want to think 10 times before you speak so that when you speak, your words are pregnant. Your words are pregnant with insight and with promise. So you really want to be very, very mindful and intentional and deliberate of when you open your mouth, something of substance comes out. 100%. 100%. But back to the question, though, Sean. I 
don't think I answered your question. No, you didn't answer the question. I, your question. I just gave you some. I just gave you some weight, right? So let me answer your question. Is everybody born to be a speaker? No, some people are born without the ability to speak. Some people are born without the ability to speak. So let me let me break down speaking into its rawest form. And when you break it down to its rawest form, I'll say yes. Because the definition of speak is to communicate. To communicate. And we were all put here to communicate in one way or the other, whether it's the spoken word or the written word. Why would they call it a word? Why would they call it a word that's not spoken, written? That's because it's still expression. It's still communication. And we were put here to relate and communicate with others. And communication is the highest level of intelligence. You don't have to be born rich. You don't have to be born into the right family. You don't have to be born into the right country. You can be born into a third world country, fourth, fifth, sixth world country, no running water, no electricity. Your ability to communicate will take you wherever you want to go. And you'll know where you're at in your ability to communicate. All you have to do is take an assessment of where you are right now. Because your ability to, co to communicate is what got you there. So if you want to move your situation, if you want to change your circumference, if you want to change your circumstances, change your ability to communicate. 100%. Now, when it comes to speaking styles, let's talk a little bit about that. So can you break down some of the most common speaking styles? Or in fact, how does one go about finding their own authentic speaking style? It goes back into branding and brand voice. You have to look for your outcome. What is your desired outcome? How do you want to be perceived? How do you want to be experienced? How do you want to be held? When I say held, I mean, to what point of distinction do you want to be considered in the marketplace? Speaking right. styles are learned. It's like, it's like driving. Speaking styles are learned, they can be modified, they can be optimized, or they can be discarded. Some people just drive because they've got feet and because they've got access to a car. Like some people speak just because they have a mouth. <laughs> some people just love to hear the sound of their own voice. And most times they make a mess. Like the same person who just gets into a car and drives off without a uh, wanton consideration of what, where they're going, what speed they're driving, or who's around them. When you are mindful, then you can speak mindfully. When you are skillful, then you can speak skillfully. Again, it comes down to your brand, right? Billion dollar brand, brand voice. How do you want to be perceived? A billionaire, Warren Buffett, said that the most important investment that he ever made, still to this day, the most important investment that he ever made was not in stocks or trade or real estate. It was in the ability to communicate effectively. 100%. On that note, guys, we're going to take a short break. If you have any questions, please hold it for after the break. We'll be right back. Let's Stay grow. Tuned. I said Sean Ra East. I'm proud. That's Sean Ra East. Leadership is not the brand they made for us. Listen, he brought fire, heat. He didn't hold back. 20 years down the line, what I could sell, why not serve first? Service over salary. Branding like a leader closes the gap for people who want branding. Speaking like a leader closes the gap for people who are nervous about speaking. If Steve Jobs would have speculated, we wouldn't have Apple. He changed lives, he helped people open up their business and start their business. We are, are the, the brand. brand. Some people say, Sean, should I quit my job? Mentally? Yes. As a speaker, too, to be able to learn from him and watch him and, and you know, game respects game. And I want to have that much game someday. The right client? Pay 500000 for what you do. You have to be bold in your beliefs. He has been an amazing asset to this event and a pleasure to work with. Very captivating, collaborative, um, worked very well with the audience. I want to help you put a zero behind your number, right? 
The session was great. How he is online, virtually, he is even more phenomenal in person. Be the face of change that you want to see. Stop asking questions and start giving demands. The entire team has just been absolutely incredible. They are a joy to work with. They go above and beyond. Give yourself a round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. It's very important that you know yourself to the highest degree possible because it's through knowing ourselves that we're able to know other people. You are the most important person in the room and the better that you know yourself, the better that you're able to communicate to others. So you're not only playing the game knowing who you are, but you're also playing the game knowing who everyone else is so that you're not playing blind. He's extremely engaging with people. He has a fantastic smile and he's just very high energy person. This is called leadership development. So we have to be independently knowledgeable and considerate to know who we are so we can more effectively know who other people are. As the leader, it's your responsibility to allocate resources in the right places. If you don't know how to communicate effectively, you're losing the battle. The reason why I did this and what I do is help leaders to become brands and brand themselves. You train people how to treat you by how you treat yourself. I teach authenticity marketing. If people can take advantage of you, they will in your personal or professional existence. My biggest takeaway just from day one is you are the brand. I would recommend it to anybody that's really looking to build a personal brand. Just the brand in general has changed my life. I've grown so much since I've been a part of this. I see myself in what he does and I believe in it just as much as I believe in myself. All right, all right. If you notice, you know something that I noticed as we're going through the commercials, Junior, on all of the co all the commercials, I'm talking about communication. On yeah. all the commercials, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm communicating, but I'm communicating about effective communication. That's one of my passions, always has been leadership, communication, how to effectively, look, closing, closing in sales. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and I was like, you have to be able to close deals. If you can't sell, then you won't be doing well in business whatsoever. It'll be farewell, right? You either sell well or farewell, right? <laughs> it's over for you. And mm -hmm. in order to close, in order to, to close the deal to make a sale, in order to close yourself into a job or a position in the job market, you need to be able to sell. You need to be able to speak. You need to be able to speak. You need to be able to persuade and influence that's right. And in fact, I think the third video you said something at the end where it says, if you don't know how to communicate, you're losing half of the battle. Yes, sir. I think you just said that. It's over. It's over. It is. You know, I find I find it so interesting when you spoke about um, Warren Buffett before you went to the break. And most of the times when people think about Warren Buffett, they think about a stock guy. Like they don't they don't think about a speaker and they don't think about a salesman. So people don't necessarily see Warren as a, as a salesman, but I heard somebody say that Warren, Warren Buffett, he's so good, he can convince you that, that you can drink a, um, a couple cans of Coke every single day. He says he's been doing it for how many years? <laughs> and he's like 80-something, if I'm not mistaken, right. right? Yes, sir. So, sir. so he's, very, he's, he's very, very good, guys. Like when you, when you hear Warren Buffett speak, so a lot of people, their, their idea of a speaker is somebody who's very, um, let's say, loud or somebody who's very um, energetic. That's like if, and I want you to write it down, put it in the chat. Like when I say speaker, what image comes to mind? So what is the image that you have in your mind? So if you're on YouTube, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, put it in the chat. Let's do a little experiment, Sean. What is the image that comes to your mind? Like the first thing, don't try to think too hard or anything. Just put the, the first thing that comes to mind. What comes to mind when you think about a speaker? Put that down. All right, that's a challenge. Let's just do a little experiment. Let's do a little experiment. But 
most people would say, well, I think of somebody who's very charismatic. But let me ask you this, though. Is charisma a huge part of speaking? Do they, you know, are there effective speakers that are not necessarily, you know, super charismatic? <laughs> you you know, make me tell on people, man. You, you know, um, Malcolm Gladwell is a great speaker. Is he very charismatic or loud? Not at all. Not at all. Who else? Simon Sinek, phenomenal speaker. Phenomenal. Stedman Graham effective speaker see guys there's a there's a mixture there's an eclectic mixture between substance and style some people have all the pop and all the pizzazz but there's no substance it's all style and then you have people who have all substance no style and they'll put you to sleep but it's based, it's, it's again, it's almost like beauty. It's almost like beauty. It's akin to beauty. And when I say it's akin to beauty, what do I mean? By saying that it's akin to beauty, I mean that it's in the eyes of the beholder. I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. A person who listen to me and say, I love what Sean is saying. Good God, that energy, that fire, that passion, that purpose. A matter of fact, I'll play a, uh, I'll, I'll play a video after this where a guy is talking about how I was bringing the fire and bringing the heat. Right. But then there's other people who will listen to me and say, he's too loud for me. He's 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 too. There's too much energy, a little bit too much passion. He's intimidating. So on in the in the mind of the beholder, it's just like beauty, whereas some people will listen to me and hear substance, style, uh, pop, persuasion, influence and be galvanized other people will hear my voice and it'll be like uh nails on a chalkboard right so it's really in the eyes of the beholder so what do i mean let me go a little bit further to your to answer your question yes or yes definitely there are people who do not need any energy any charisma sometimes when people hear charisma they think you're trying to convince them of something that's not true and they wonder like where's all the energy coming from and why are they so oh up uh, uh, they trying to they they're trying to uh, they trying to sell me something right yeah, they, um, especially oh, especially when um when people start speaking like fast super fast yeah, they're, oh they're talking too fast they, this is yeah, like, you're talking a little too fast man <laughs> you got to take me to the car salesman spot you know so you have to be mindful of who your audience is very important so i'm going to matter of fact during the break I'll show you two different styles. I'll show you speaking in front of one audience. And then I'll show you speaking in front of another audience because I can show you better than I could tell you. So when we go to a break, I'm going to play three different videos, three different videos. One will be in front of a more calm, subdued audience of intellectuals and employees. The second video will be play, that I play will be in front of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, employees, entrepreneurs, two different markets. And then the third one, I'll show you a small business association where there are some testimonials. As a matter of fact, in each of these, there are some testimonials. And I want you to notice the differences in the perception of the people, how I tailor my oration to the audience that I'm speaking to, body language and everything. It's a form of communication. Your body speaks more than your mouth does. Guys, you should be writing that down. I promise you, you should be writing, your body speaks more than your mouth does. Your facial expressions speak more than your mouth does. You can say whatever you wanna say, if your body is not in alignment with the words that are coming out of your mouth, then your listener is going to experience cognitive dissonance and they're not going to trust you. They're not going to trust you. There's going to be something off. That's And that's what they'll say. If they, if you ask them why they didn't buy or why they didn't move forward or what their interpretation of this, the presentation was, they'll say there was something off. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Sometimes people need to match their, their face with the words that are coming out of their mouth. They have to practice. 
This is, I, I, you know, I was saying something to somebody because I'm about to do a voiceover for a client and they told me what they wanted. They literally told me what they wanted. You know, Sean, I want you to talk about this and talk about this and talk about this. And I said, okay, great. And then they hit me back because I guess they didn't get the voice note. And they said, uh, do you need to see the video first? And I said, of course I do. <laughs> I, said, I said, of course I do. You know, I promise you, there's more that goes into speaking than you think. When you hear good speakers, you just say to yourself, oh, they're blessed. They're, they're phenomenal. They were born like they were born that way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nothing could be more. Nothing could be further from the truth. No one comes out of the womb making sales. No one comes out of the womb with the microphone speaking phenomenally. No one comes out of the womb making friends and uh, relating to people. These are all learned professions and skills that are high level, high economy skills. Just think about it. Junior, people would rather uh, parachute out of a plane with no people. Would, people would rather jump out of a plane with no parachute than speak. Public speaking is the greatest fear on the planet. And Sean, that's that's all around the world. That's yes, like all around the world. Public speaking is the most feared. The most feared action. They would rather stick their hand in, a, in an alligator's mouth. Hmm. Wow. That's interesting. Um, I like what you said about the different settings. And that, that was actually going to be my next question. Like, should, you know, are different speakers suited for different settings? And you sort of already answered that, right? So somebody who is more, let's say the setting is more academia, they may not necessarily want the whole hype. They're looking for more evidence-based statistics, proof, like things that make, you know, make um, logical sense, right? And statistical sense. And then maybe you have a crowd that uh, they just want to, they just want the energy. You know, they're looking for something more motivational, inspirational. So I guess every speaker sort of has their own circuit or their own sort of thing um, where they could exalt themselves or however you, however you guys say it, right? They could take the stage by storm, <laughs> take the right. stage by storm and sort of do their thing. I'm going to move the, um, the IG so they can see the, see the screen. So they can actually see the video when it plays. Okay, so the people on IG can now see the uh, see the screen and the presentation, so they'll be able to see it. Alexander, how are you doing? Alexander on LinkedIn Voice. We are talking about branding, and today we're talking about speaking. As a speaker, how do you build your brand? How do you build your business? How are you more effective? How can you drive bottom line results? That's right. Uh, Sean, we're actually due for our second break. So, guys, we're going to take that break. When we come back, more on speaking. Stay tuned. Okay, very good. Just for one second, guys, I'm going to remind you what I'm going to do. I'm going to play three different video clips of me speaking. If you're on LinkedIn Voice, just listen to the tone of my voice. Listen to the audience. Listen to the voice of the audience. See how they respond. See what they say about me. And notice how I'm able to transcend audiences and kind of give the same message with a different energy catering to the audience that I'm in front of. Pay very close attention because I guarantee you that if you get this right, you'll be able to add a zero to the back of your number effortlessly. Let's grow. It's very important that you know yourself to the highest degree possible because it's through knowing ourselves that we're able to know other people. You are the most important person in the room, and the better that you know yourself, the better that you're able to communicate to others. So you're not only playing the game knowing who you are, but you're also playing the game knowing who everyone else is, so that you're not playing blind. He's extremely engaging with people. He has a fantastic smile, and he's just a very high-energy person. This is called leadership development. So we have to be independently knowledgeable and considerate to know who we are so we can more effectively know who other people are. As the leader, it's your responsibility to allocate resources in the right places. If you don't know how to communicate effectively, you're losing the battle. I said Sean Raiz. I'm proud. I said Sean Raiz. Leadership is not the brand they made for us. Listen, he brought fire, heat. He didn't hold back. 
20 years down the line what I could sell. Why not serve first? Service over salary. Branding like a leader closes the gap for people who want branding. Speaking like a leader closes the gap for people who are nervous about speaking. If Steve Jobs would have speculated, we wouldn't have Apple. He changed lives. He helped people open up their business and start their business. We are the brand. Some people say, Sean, should I quit my job? Mentally? Yes. As a speaker, too, to be able to learn from him and watch him and, and you know, game respects game. And I want to have that much game someday. The right client pay 500000 for what you do. You have to be bold in your beliefs. He has been an amazing asset to this event and a pleasure to work with. Very captivating, collaborative, um, worked very well with the audience. I want to help you put a zero behind your number, right? The session was great. How he is online, virtually, he is even more phenomenal in person. Be the face of change that you want to see. Stop asking questions and start giving demands. The entire team has just been absolutely incredible. They are a joy to work with. They go above and beyond. Give yourself a round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Business is like a game of chess, it's not checkers. If you don't know how to lead with a personal brand, then you're losing the battle. Everything about Sean's talk was fantastic. I mean, I got so much from it. So he was really bringing fire and passion and love and spirit to let everybody else know how do you become a leader amongst the leaders. You hold the key in your hand. There is more power in this phone than there was that took the first man to the moon. His energy, his dynamic information gave a really great presentation. I didn't ask for any money. I didn't have an offer. I had a heart to help people and meet them where they were at and find their need and fulfill it. John is the bomb. All right, all right, guys. Now, I want you to start putting in the chat what you saw. What did you see? And if you're on LinkedIn Voice, you can raise your hand, come on up and tell us. But if you're on IG, if you're on LinkedIn Live, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube or on Twitter, put into the chat. What are some things that you saw different in different settings? And you know what? One of the first things that that pointed out to me, that stuck out to me, was the fact that two different people in two different places used the word "fire" to describe the way I spoke. And that was in a similar setting. It wasn't in the first setting. In the first setting, it was much more quiet, much more calm, much more deliberate, much more intentional, much more tailored to a sophisticated. That was um, sure. That was a conversation that I did at the Society of Human Resource Management. And a lot of people, if you see me in one setting. You'll say, oh, nah, he, he he's not one of those educational speakers. But the fact is, I have a master's degree in industrial and organizational psychology and another master's degree in organizational development and change. And you'd be surprised. I speak at SIAP. I speak at SHRM. I speak at a lot of executive events. But the way that I tailor my pronunciation and my enunciation is absolutely different in those settings. Like I just switched up for you just now pronouncing certain words, I'll slow down and pronounce each part of them and my cadence will change. It'll be less, not less passionate, but less forceful. Interesting. How much of that involves this intense focus? Because to me, like just listening to you say that, that sounds like a lot of focus and a lot of intentionality uh, to actually so, so for, I guess what I'm asking is, are you at the are you at this point where it's like unconscious competence, or do you still have to like actually think about doing that? Like when you're in the room with the the city, the professionals, the more professional setting, are you always on stage consciously thinking, okay, I have to tailor my pronunciation, I have to tailor my enunciation, or is it at this point is it like sort of like an unconscious competence for you? You know, um, guys, the, the quality of the answer will always be determined by the quality of the question. Junior's really good, right? The way he asks questions. 
because I want you to consider what I'm about to say. It's not about me. When I go to speak, it's never about me. It's always about the audience. So when I see the room, one of the things that I do as a speaker is I arrive early. I always arrive early. Number one, I, I arrive about two days early, no less than one day before the event, usually two days before. The first day, I want to look at the town. The first day, I want to look at the neighborhood. What is the demographic? What is the pace? What is the energy like in the air? Now, I know this will sound very eclectic or very extra to a lot of people, but for me as a speaker, I resonate with the atmosphere. I want to know what the energy is like in the neighboring districts in a five mile radius. I'll go out to eat the night before and I'll sit down and I'll, you know, shake hands that will never see me speak. They don't know what I do. I'm just experiencing the artistry of the community. Number two, I always go to the event a day early just to make sure that the, the, the sound system is set up, the cameras are set up. I want to see the layout. I want to know how people are going to be sitting, where they're going to be sitting who's going to be orchestrating the event. The event managers are usually there the day before. The organizers are there. They're setting up. I want to meet them. I want to shake their hands. I want to thank them for having me come in. And I just want to communicate with them that I'm a professional, that I'm appreciative. And I want to know what the, the ideal need is. What is the gap? What am I being called in for? If everything goes 100% perfectly, I'm giving you guys a lot of money right now. I hope you're paying attention. I really do. I really hope you're paying attention because I'm giving you a ton of money right now. So I show up early the day before I meet the people. I shake the hands of the people that paid me to come. And I ask them if everything goes perfect, what is the desired outcome? Sometimes they'll say thoughtfulness. Next time they'll say energy. They might say if the people cry then that's what we want them to do. We want them to think about the situation and that's why you're being brought in. And I'll say, okay, great. Now I know what they're looking for. And I know that the mic works, the tech, so the spec, this, the, uh, the electrical equipment is up to par. I know where I'm going to speak. I know how the cameras are going to hit me. I know where my, my team is going to be. Okay, great. The next day before I speak, I'll usually get there early. And this was taught to me by Eric Thomas. I saw Eric do it on a number of occasions. He would, uh, he would uh, post up at the door. And as people were coming in, he would shake hands. Now, he's he's grown his his brand a lot. So I it, that's shifted now. He doesn't do that as often. But I remember when he did this years and years ago, he would meet everybody, shake their hand as they came in, thank them for coming. Whether it was a free event or a paid event, I said, wow, that's that's greatness. So I make a habit of showing up early and just milling about and communicating with the people. They don't know that I'm gonna speak yet. And I'm just, you know, connecting with the culture and the community. I wanna know what the feeling is, what's the energy in the room and who's actually there. Because if you don't do this guys and you bust out of the, you know, you bust out from behind stage like the lion, rawr, and it's a more subdued professional audience, you just made a fool of yourself and you will not be called back. However, if you meet everyone and you know who your audience is, again, Junior, the answer to the question, is it's not about me. It's not about me. So yes, it's always conscious. It's always intentional. And it's always tailored to the people that just came in the room. Because the event organizer might have a completely different idea because they don't understand human behavior. So in their mind, these, these people need to be shocked. They need to be woke up. They need to be brought to alarm, called to action. That's what they'll say to me in an email before or within my uh, speaker form that I send to them before I, you know, before I sign on, they'll let me know what their goals are, what their needs are, what the audience is. But it takes a communicator to get into the room and touch the people and shake the people's hands to really know what it is. Right. So they might have the wrong interpretation. But once I see it and I've shaken hands and I've touched the people, then when it's time for me to speak, they already know me. There's a relationship already built. They know that I'm a human being. They, there's no power differential, or even if there's a little bit of a power differential, a lot of the, the ambivalence has been removed from the room. They have, they have a say, they have an opinion, they have a feeling because I've touched them and I've let them know that I'm a real person, I'm approachable. I don't do the whole, the whole uh, starlight, star bright nonsense. 
I keep it 1000% with the people. And again, Junior, it's tailored to them. I give them what they need in the way that they want it. I'm like a waiter. And in the beginning, when they come to the when they come to sit down, I'm like a waiter and I'm almost coming to the table and asking them, what do they want? How do they want it? How do they want their food? I can basically tell that by the look in their eyes and by their personality trait. And then when it's time for me to speak, I bring out the uh, the salad, the the warm, the room temperature water or the Perrier in the bottle without being open. And then I serve the the salmon um, medium well. Yes, sir. Yvette, Yvette says, she says that's very clever. <laughs> I like that. That's very, it is very clever, isn't it? It is very clever. Uh, but um, I, I, you know, Sean, why you said that, I was thinking about copywriting. And um, I realized that all disciplines have their, sort of their, I'm not sure if it would, it would be like an eclectic process, but all disciplines have their sort of thing that they go through, their sort of um, process. So a lot of people think copywriting is about writing. It's not about writing. Writing is the last thing we do. It's literally the last thing. It's like 20% of the work to actually write what we need to write. 80% is a whole bunch of other things that we may talk about tomorrow. So tune in, right? But um, just like with the speaking process, speaking is actually the last thing you do. Like actually talking to the people is the last thing you do, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into the process to make the, the whole thing successful. <clears throat> so that's what stood out to me. Let me say something else mm -hmm. too, to Junior, for my people on LinkedIn, right? And to my professionals, because before you become a successful entrepreneur, nine times out of 10, you're a successful professional. We work with executives. I work with CEOs. I work with executives. I work with key professionals, key executives, managers, leaders, and I did the same thing before a job interview. I did the exact same thing before I submitted uh, an application to speak at a workforce development event. I did the same thing before I went to a job interview. I did the same thing before I even submitted my resume. I would want to know what the, the surrounding blocks were. I would walk the neighborhood. I would canvas the neighborhood like stalking a prey, almost like a lion walking the perimeter. I'm being brought, it's being brought to my awareness now. It's something that I kind of did unconsciously, but I would stalk days before. If my interview was on a Friday, I'd be there Tuesday. I'd be there Wednesday. And then I'd, I'd look at the organization and walk into the organization as a visitor. They wouldn't know that I was there to interview. They wouldn't know what my business was. I would just come in, introduce myself to the people, see the people walking out of the business and just getting a good weight canvassing to see if it's somewhere where I wanted to be. Not just on the number side, not just on the what can they pay me side, not on that side, the side of how can I be of impact? How can I be of affect? Is this a place where I want to spend my time? What is the energy in the neighborhood? What is the air? Is it there's a word called alacrity? Not only electric, is it electric, but is it electric? Hmm. Yeah, Sean, you'll have to break that one down. What does that mean? Alac you said electric? Yes, it's so let's put it in English for the for um you know the regular <laughs> regular people, man. What does that it, mean? It's Electric. hard to understand conceptually unless you know. I would say Google the word. It's palatable. It's almost a taste of the atmosphere. It's almost a taste of the atmosphere. But you, you know, you feel it. Like I always felt it, guys. Listen, I guarantee you this, and this is this is a promise. This is on one accord. This is a promise. A lot of the things that I think, I think of the word without knowing that the word exists. So electric is one of those words. I never knew it existed. I never read it. You don't read the word electric, but I thought of it as defining what I was trying to say, right? So when I Google the definition, because I don't want to give it the wrong definition, electric means of, worked by, or charged with energy, electric, right? So the energy in the room, I always say it, what's the energy in the room? I say this in my community when we do the executive coaching meetings, what is the energy in the room? You wanna know what the energy in the room is because we as communicators, so as a servant leader, 
as a servant king. We're, we, we all are Lord of our domains. Let me say that. We are all Lord of our domains, but some of us are more forceful, more edict, more driving than others. Some are driven, some are driving. I'm more driven, so I have to receive the energy in the room in order to give back what's good. If I haven't seen the room, I can't read the room. That's why when the gentleman said, I want you to talk about... um. He said, I want you to talk about fitness, strength, endurance. Send me the uh, send me the voice clip. I was like, no, sir, you're going to have to send me the video so that I can get the video. And then based on what you give me, I'll be able to give you. So my speaking style is basically feedback. And it's the same thing on a job interview or relating to people in your profession. You've got to know what the energy is in the room. You've got to read the room. And when I say read the room, I don't mean with your eyes. I mean with your aura, with your sensory perception. That's a seventh level of awareness. If you want to become effective as a speaker, it's not, it's not so much what you read about that's outside of you. So when we did Speaking Like a Leader, when we did the course Speaking Like a Leader, it wasn't about reading the books. It wasn't about uh, training off, listening to other speakers and their style. It was about going inside of yourself and listening to yourself and finding your own style, finding your own core, finding your own purpose, finding your own point of resonance. How do you speak? How do you show up? What is your desired outcome? And then tailor your performance or your presentation to affect others' perception of you to your desired outcome. If you're not doing that, then you're just hustling, man. You 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 know you were you were bought and paid for. It's different. It's different. But I what I'm giving you guys right now is free. But I'm giving it to you for free because you wouldn't be able to pay for it because it's priceless. Hundred percent. Sean, let's go to our final break, guys. We'll be right back after the short break. Stay tuned. This is Breakfast with the Brand. Let's go. You know, there's nothing that you cannot overcome in this world except that which you refuse to fight. When I say brand, <laughs> when I say brand and authenticity and being the brand, you got to know your story. You got to know your story. You got to own your story. And you got to be the champion of your story. It's very important that we control our narrative. It's very important that we don't allow anyone else to control our narrative. Because when they control our narrative, they control our freedom. They control our freedom and our future. I don't just want it for me. I want it for everybody. It can happen. And it can happen for you. Especially... When you get branded like a leader. Business is like a game of chess. It's not checkers. If you don't know how to lead with the personal brand, then you're losing the battle. Everything about Sean's talk was fantastic. I mean, I got so much from it. So he was really bringing fire and passion and love and spirit to let everybody else know how do you become a leader amongst the leaders. You hold the key in your hand. There is more power in this phone than there was that took the first man to the moon. His energy, his dynamic information gave a really great presentation. I didn't ask for any money. I didn't have an offer. I had a heart to help people and meet them where they were at and find their need and fulfill it. John is the bomb. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's all right, all right. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, I actually wanted to bring up a comment. Comments, just go ahead, put it in the... um. Any questions, excuse me, put it in the comments. I wanted to bring this up. So Hilarious Dog Cam Clips says, as a speaker, you can build your brand. <clears throat> That's actually what I wanted to touch on. You know, 
what is the difference between just a regular speaker and a speaking brand? Somebody who actually has a speaker brand, a professional speaker, what separates them? And how can somebody begin building that speaker brand? Well, every, I mean, if you got a mouth, you're a speaker, right? You, you speak, you speak. My child was a speaker when they were born. I was a speaker in the third grade, right? But a speaking brand is when you know me for speaking. So if you look at a lot of the first videos that I did, the first logos that I had, the pictures that I promote, the pictures that I put out, always had a microphone around me. Always had a microphone around me. And I was very professionally adorned, very professionally situated and mindful as if I'm going to speak. So this is even during um, the 2020, whatever you believe about it, the 2020 fiasco, right? The 2020 uh, situation. I was always, and I was mindful about it. I said, hold on guys, because we can't even go outside right now. <laughs> we, we can't even go outside right now. We can't speak. Nobody's coming into the room with each other. Everybody has a mask on. I was very intentional and very mindful about doing about pushing a logo and pushing a branding not just a brand but a branding that positioned me as a speaker even though there were no live events going on and we didn't know when we were going to be able to come outside and congregate in the in the company of one another i was very mindful to make sure that i impressed upon the mind of the public and the audience that i am a speaker i am an executive coach who professionally speaks. I'm a professional speaker. And just because, you know, we can't go outside, I don't want you to forget that. So I was very intentional, super deliberate and super forceful and masterful in the way that I made sure before a person took a picture, we were going to do uh, photo shoots or whatever, I'd say, hold on. And I'd make sure I brought my, my microphones because if you knew me, if you were just meeting me for the first time and you didn't see a microphone, you might think I'm a politician. <laughs> because of the way I dress. I've actually been stopped in public when we were shooting videos and asked what office I was running for. People tried to come to me with their, their public office problems. For, you know, they would start to uh, polish. They would start to lobby in the streets for what they wanted to change in the neighborhood. And I would say, I'm not a, a politician. And they would say, no, you're, the way you're dressed, I know you're a politician. Uh, well, stop lying to us and help us do this. And I'm like, no, uh, sir, I'm actually not. They would see the cameraman and I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm not running for office. I'm running for a higher office and something bigger than politics. And that's public service in the most truest sense of the word, right? So when it comes to the brand, you want to be very, very mindful of the impression that you're giving the public because you will be held accountable to it whether you're mindful of it or not so i always tell people listen i say to you, that you're building a brand now whether you know it or not my people on linkedin linkedin voice you're building a brand now people looking at me on linkedin live you're building a brand now look at your position look at your office that's commiserate with your branding <laughs> look at your salary look at your relationship look at the car you drive those things are commiserate with your branding Look at your neighborhood, your zip code, the company that you keep. Those are all things commiserate with your branding. The way people treat you is commiserate with your branding. And if you want it to change, you got to change the branding. You got to change the brand. So if you want to be known as a speaker, but you're never speaking. If you want to be known as a coach, but you're never coaching. If you want to be known as a financial expert, but you're not positioned or represented visually, graphically, vocally, or physically as a financial professional, then all of the things that you think you are, are that, that only exists in your mind. It does, but branding, the brand is an expression and an experience of you that is held in the mind of the public. And what you want to do is you want those two things to match. So if you think you're meant for bigger things, you want people to call you in the office and say, hey, I've been watching your performance for the past three months, I think you're meant for bigger things. How much money do you want to make here? What is your idea of the future in this company? 
Sean, let's talk about speaking like a leader and uh, a little bit about that program. I think most people know uh, the brand for branding, but most people, they don't know about, you know, the other programs like speaking like a leader, for example. So let's talk about that, uh, what exactly that is. And, you know, should somebody sign up, what can they expect to gain as an end result from signing up for that, from that program? I tell people all the time, the industry that we talk about and it's professional and personal, it doesn't make a difference whether you're an entrepreneur or an employee, there is no cap. There is no ceiling. There is no earning per capita. There are people that get paid $5 to speak. <laughs> there, there are people that get paid $50 to speak. They call it an honorarium. I don't know how honorable it is. There are people who get paid $500 to speak. I think that's also tantamount to disrespectful. There are people that get paid $5,000 to speak. That should only happen if you only have to walk to the place where you're speaking. There are people that get paid $50,000 to speak. That's a good number. And it's based on how you speak. And you have to be formally trained in speaking to do what we do to make it look and sound as effortlessly as it does to be able to weave your story into your presentation. Remember, Warren Buffett is not a professional speaker. He's an investor. And he said the best investment he ever made was in a communications course, speaking, public speaking. Why did he say that? He said that because, and he say, he, he blames or he credits that with all of his future success, all of the success that followed Warren Buffett since he was in his early 20s. He does not say it's because of his financial education. He doesn't say it's because of his college education. He says it's because of my speaking ability, my ability to communicate my ideas into the minds of the investors, into the hearts of the listeners is what has given me the ability to move money, to move money. So if you want to move money, if you want to make it rain, if you want, if you want, if you want to be able to think of a number in your mind and then pull it out of the atmosphere, if you want to be able to feel confident. So a lot of people say like my problem is confidence. I don't feel confident. You don't feel confident because you're not competent. And you might be very well skilled as an IT professional. You might be very well skilled as a, a lawyer. You may be very well skilled as a doctor and HR professional. But if you can't communicate that competence, that's what results in a lack of confidence. So if you don't feel comfortable speaking to people, you're never going to do well in business. You're going to have to hire people. And if you don't have the money to hire people, then it's all on you. Which means you have to be able, you have to learn this skill. If you're in a relationship and it's not working out, do you know that the problem is not whatever she does or whatever he does? The real problem is communication. So anyway, I'm sorry. Speaking like a leader helps you go from closed mouth to open mouth, uh, closed hand to open hand, bank account with limits to an unlimited earning ca capacity and ability from super competence to super confidence, from being a little bit afraid to being comfortable on stage, comfortable on your skin, being able to demand what you're worth in a way that doesn't seem confrontational or threatening. But that's not all we teach. We also teach professional and executive presence. We teach effective professional communication, leadership communication. It's not all about the spoken word. It's the written word. It's communication. It's how people see you and perceive you. That's what we teach in a small frame. But one of the main things that we do, one of the main things that we do inside of brand, inside of speaking like a leader is help you to tell your origin brand story. So there's a lot of people that say, Sean, I've got so many skills or I've got so many ideas and I can't really decide because you don't know where I came from. What we do is we give you a system, a system to put all of those things in, all of those components, where you came from, what you've been through, what you deliver, all of the value that you have, how to turn your education experience and expertise, I'll say it again, education experience and expertise into impact, income, and independence. 100%. All right, guys. So, Sean, let's put up the link for the Leadership Live Deep Dive at Five, the Brandon Like a Leader Masterclass. Guys, if you want to connect with us, if you want to learn more about how you could transform your your speaking ability into a speaking business, 
then go to that, that link right there, www.livedeepdive.com. Uh, we will be live at Saturday on at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you'll be able to ask us questions as well as get more information about the actual program. So it's www.livedeepdive.com. Of course, it's 100% free of charge. So please register and also share it with one other person that you feel like needs this kind of information. All right. So any any final or any closing thoughts? Um, it's interesting because I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback on IG, a lot of flames, a lot of fire, speaker signs, speakers. Kimberly says you tailored your energy based on the audience. That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to know who you're speaking to. You don't know how you need to speak until you know your audience. You don't listen. It's the same thing with product development. You don't develop a product outside of the audience's awareness. You need to do an audience survey. You need to know who you're speaking to before you tailor your speech. Right. And when you get good at this, it'll it'll be so comfortable to you that you won't need to write it down and remember it. You won't need to script. That's one of the gifts that I have. I don't need to script. I'm able to feel the audience and give them exactly what they need instead of having to memorize a whole bunch of words. I think it's better when you're super authentic. You, re I, I know this, if you're authentic and you don't script, you remember your lines, right? Um, and again, it's not just for, this is not entertainment. That's one thing that I don't do, right? So if you're interested in like entertainment and becoming a better entertainer, this is not the program for you. I'm not the coach for you. This is for executives. This is for professionals. This is for leaders. This is for entrepreneurs who wanna change the world and not just change the size of their bank account. That's a, that's a result. It will happen. You'll change your profession. You'll be able to change your bank account, but it has to be done ethically and for the right reasons. And I work best with professionals and people who are very serious about driving, not just results in their own life, but in the world. I just want to make that clear. Um, I, I, the question was asked, what state are you located in? That's an interesting question. Um, let's grow, right? You tailored your energy based on the audience. Guys, listen, livedeepdive.com, www.livedeepdive.com. Wherever, you, wherever you're listening at, or wherever you're listening to me from and wherever whatever platform you are on watching this, in my profile, there's a link. Go to it. Just go to it and see what you can see. Like people always ask me, Sean, how do we get in contact with you? You can go to either livedeepdive.com or you can Google me and pick your point of entry. This is what we do for real. 100%. Thank you very much, guys. Tune in tomorrow, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This has been Breakfast with a Brand. Let's grow. Same, same brand time, same brand channel. Let's grow. Uh -huh.